Illustrator is the best tool for creating seamless repeatable patterns that can be applied on product packaging, gift wraps, wallpapers, clothes, and so much more. In this video, I will explain how to set up a simple but appealing pattern design. This tutorial is part of a comprehensive online course called Adobe Illustrator Masterclass. You can check it out and try the free trial if you want to learn everything there is to know about this amazing industry standard application. Creating seamless patterns in Illustrator is a breeze. There is an amazing workflow which helps you to very quickly and efficiently create your own pattern designs. This feature is extremely useful for anyone into fashion design, packaging, branding or licensing design. There are a lot of designers actually specialized in creating patterns and most of them again would use Illustrator and this feature that I'm about to show you. So whenever I design a pattern first, I decide obviously the theme and the colors that I would like to work with. And it's always good to have at least five illustrations or icons that you are going to incorporate into your design. If you have more, then better. But what you should also think about is to have some bigger and more detailed elements and then have smaller and just more simple elements as well because you can play around with these to fill the gaps between the bigger items. So all you have to do if you want to turn these into a pattern is to select everything that you wish to use in your pattern and then go up to the object menu, choose pattern make. Once you do that, Illustrator will immediately turn all of these elements into a repeated pattern. So this is the preview that we get. Now the first thing that you will notice is that the layers panel will change and you will only see those elements that you prepared for the pattern. So the selection that we had. And pattern editing mode is a special mode from which we will be able to go back to normal editing mode. And the pattern you create will be saved as a swatch. So what do we have here on the left? This is the pattern options panel. And one of the first things that you find here is the tool called pattern tile tool with which you can change the size of your tile. So that's basically going to give us either more or less space around the elements that we created or we are using. And I can always change this at any point. But what I would like to do now is to shift things around a bit because this composition is too rigid. So we need to play around with these items a bit. So at this point, you can move things around freely as you would normally do it in Illustrator. So you can resize them, you can bring to front, send to back, you can rotate things around. And generally what I'm looking for is a composition where we have visual interest, but also something that has a little bit of layering, so having some things in front of others and also a bit dynamic, not just too flat. Now one thing you might notice here is that we don't have any background color. We had a background color before, but that's not visible now. And because I'm using white on some of my items, it's actually hard to see what it's going to look like. So what I normally do is that I use rectangle tool and I fill up the area that our tile is going to be. And I'm going to move this rectangle all the way at the bottom of the layer structure. And this way we can see it better what's going to happen. But I'm going to change this color slightly. I think I was using something more similar to this one. It might have been a bit brighter actually. So I'm just going to shift click here and just brighten it up a bit. Yeah, it was closer to that, maybe something like that. Okay, now one thing that you might notice is that when you use a background rectangle, you might not get the repeated elements visible. That is because you have overlap options here at the bottom and you have to make sure that you use the right overlap options. So at the moment I move this map to the top edge and it should be repeating itself here at the bottom. But because I have the top in front option, it's not working. I have to change that to bottom in front. So 
Now, no matter how I move this map around, you see it will always show up at the bottom. And you will see always the actual objects fully visible and the repeated preview in a dimmed 50% visibility. You can of course turn that off as well, but I actually quite like it that way so I can really see which items I can move around and I can imagine how it's going to look once it's repeated. So another thing that we can test is to move the fire, let's say here on the left. And once again, the same problem occurs, but now it's the horizontal overlap. So instead of left in front, I need to use right in front and then immediately the fire shows up there. So if I move the fire here on the top left corner, my overlap will be perfect. Instead, if I move it to the bottom right corner, it's going to be cropped. So just avoid using these two edges if you have these two options selected. Or vice versa, avoid using the left and top edges if you use the other two options. Let me just move the tent closer here. And what I'm actually trying to achieve is a little bit more square format. So I'm going to move these smaller items in here for now and uh, maybe rotate the arrows around, something like that. And then I can go back to the tile tool and I can adjust my tile to something more like this. Now, the map needs to be resized a bit because it's overlapping another item. So I'm just going to drag it and make it smaller. Holding down the shift key and then maybe move these two items as well a bit to the left. Okay, it's getting there. The compass I'm going to also rotate slightly and then maybe I move it slightly further in and then the tent can overlap as well. Remember we can use the left and the top edges, that's the way we've set it up. Now at this point I feel like there's a little bit too much going on in the middle and there's quite a big gap here and also here. So in these cases what you can do is obviously move things around but you can also duplicate items. So if I select the map I can alt click and drag it and now I have two of them. This one I can rotate a bit and I can resize it and I can also use our favorite recolor artwork option in which we will keep the same colors we will just randomize them with the option called randomly change color order. So if I click on this it mixes up the colors and immediately we get a slightly different version of the original design, which is perfect. I'm just going to click OK. That's all I needed to do there. And we can try this with the backpack as well. I'm just going to duplicate this, make it smaller, rotate it and move it up here. Again, I go into recolor artwork, click on the same option. And once again, we have a different version, but if you don't like what it created, you can always keep pressing this until you get a good mix of colors. So I am going to keep going and that is quite nice. It's quite similar, but still different. So that's perfect for us. Now, the other thing that I'm going to do is to use these small elements and place them a couple of times in the design. So they are really good fillers, I call them. I'm going to use this arrows again, maybe in the other direction, and I'm going to change their color. Maybe this can be white. And then the tree is only used once at the moment, but I'm going to duplicate it and place it maybe somewhere here. I'm just going to make it slightly smaller and then I will change its color maybe to brown and then we can use the mountains again alt click and drag place it in here maybe even use the reflect tool I'm just going to zoom closer so press O and then click and drag hold down shift that way it's going in the other direction and once again change the color of this as well so we have a little bit of variation in that so let's zoom back a bit I might make these arrows a bit smaller, 
compass can move up a bit and I'm probably going to use the boots again so I just alt click and drag make it smaller maybe also reflect this item and uh, rotate it slightly something like that now I'm going to move this further down maybe somewhere around here so I will have the tent and then this one I'm going to bring to the front let me just rotate it around a bit more something like that I think works quite nicely and maybe we can have this map the other way around and slightly bigger just to fill up the space a bit more okay so of course I could spend a lot of time refining the pattern but this is starting to look a bit more interesting and now it would be a good time to finalize this and test it out as a swatch so that's what we are going to do in the next video